and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Sally Poinsett Nash. I'm Alexandra Winman. And I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And the subject of today's video will be decided when we've made today's video. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, we, we're not sure what to film as an episode subject. Um, we've all had ideas, but none of them really sit. So we're just going to roll with it. We haven't seen each other for ages. And we're going to have a... We have. We have. We saw each other a few weeks ago, but I wasn't well. You were jet lagged. Oh, um, I was jet lagged. You were jet lagged. It. Yeah, we've, <laughs> we've forgotten. <laughs> so we're going to just have a catch up, bit of filming, keep it light. Just go with it. And make a subject up, you know, give it a title at the end. I love it because it's, it's like unplanning, um, unknown. You love the unknown. <laughs> Your life is the unknown. Something well, no, unknown. actually, it's quite known. <laughs> <laughs> I know the unknown. <laughs> um, so you have been in Australia. Mm -hmm. I was in Athens, but then London. And then... I was in India. I think we need to talk about your travels, my darling, because Laurie and I have spoken about India and Australia quite at length on mm -hmm. camera. I think you travel in a different way. I travel for business. It, uh, and I travel for work with corporate clients, mm. so it's not really, there's nothing to update for Awake Ones. Mm. Um, no, but you are making some big changes to not just your world, but to the people who you're connecting with and, and helping. Yeah, I, but I would do that anyway, whether I was yeah. travelling or not travelling or, you know, whatever my work is, I just, mm. if you're not going to do it well, What's the point of doing that? Mm. Um, so yeah, but just it's nice to be able to travel with client work. Um, yeah. Did you get to see any of Athens while you were there? It was more boardrooms and um, yeah. So um, did see a bit in the evening, um, but not everything was by darkness. <laughs> yeah. But it's so lit up if you see yeah. any of the like mm. the um, Parthenon Pantheon. I always get those two confused. We're opposite the. Um, the Acropolis. Mm -hmm. So we were staying opposite that, so I could see that from the roof. That's amazing. But yeah. Didn't really see much of Athens. <laughs> did you, did you <laughs> Probably why I'm not going to talk about it. Did you feel much of Athens? What were your feelings about I love... I, mm, Athens, neither here nor there, but I love the Greek people. Mm -hmm. I love them. I love the warmth and the hosting and yeah. the pride they take in hosting people in their country. Amazing. Love them. And I've always loved them. The food's good too. Love the food. The food, yeah. Yeah, I, there's something... I remember I went to Athens. Have you been? I haven't been to Athens, oh. no. I've been to many We need to make one's trip to Athens and we'll properly do it because I went years ago, I was going on a trip just with a couple of friends, not for a spiritual jaunt or anything, but we were going island hopping and we mm. spent like the first couple of days in Athens and it felt like celebration, homecoming, like as soon as my feet hit the earth I was like, oh yeah, I've been here, I've been here, but it felt like party, like, you know, if you can imagine back in the days of the golden age of um, Greece that it would be really like parties and food and yeah, all that kind of celebration atmosphere and yeah, everything lit up at night. What was my impressions of... Yeah, and there's a lot, isn't there? When you think mm. back on the Greek history, there's so much that's tied in with our knowledge now and the, a lot of teachings and a lot of the great minds and a lot of the great kind of philosophical ideas came from the, the Greek tradition. So it's steeped in knowledge and, and wisdom. And oh, and isn't it interesting, <laughs> the whole Oracle of Delphi thing, mm. and there's like three women here and you know there's something there I think that we're alluding to but yeah. women that were awake and inspiring mm -hmm. and people. were the people that everyone went to for advice and yeah. you know uh, you know got to kind of work through their problems with or you know mull things over Oh, I think it's good. Mm. Yeah, they've been having some very conscious conversations, those mm. oracles in Delphi. Those oracles in Delphi were having some very conscious <laughs> conversations and probably held court a little bit and had a platform and people very possibly tuned in or asked questions of them. And yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I think travel plans, what are your travel plans for next year like or well, this year now we're in this year i was um, i was going to talk about that 
I was going to talk about travel plans because um, about this time last year, we sat down and, well, I certainly, I know I did, sat down and I made an entire plan for the year ahead. I'm not usually a planner. We did this time. literally January to December. Yeah, we did January to December and we had all the different countries that we're going to do, all the different retreats, all the different workshops and the whole schedule put in so that we could be prepared, so we could start promoting, so that we could get it all organised. Not one of them happened. But so much more did. They all got replaced <laughs> with something even better. Yeah. So there's a part of me at that point when we were planning that was thinking, I'm really going to do it now, I'm going to be organised, I'm not going to be this last minute wonder that I usually am. And I tried to do it, I tried really, really hard, I tried to be really organised in the universe with it. Nope. We're just not allowed to work like that, I no. don't think. Okay. Let me rephrase the question, which I was going to do before you rudely interrupted me. Um, the one, if you could visit one country next year that you haven't been to, oh, this year, keep saying this next year, this year. This year, yeah. Um, which country do you feel a tug to go to but haven't yet been? i go this way. Bali. Yeah. Oh, really? They've never been. You've not been. Yeah. never been, and I'm Australian. It's I mean, Australia. It's, it's like Spain, isn't it? Yeah. To the Brits. Mm. Although New Zealand keeps coming up. Mm. Ooh. I've had a couple of invites mm. to New Zealand. So. You've, have you not been yet? No. Oh. No. Well, you can't go there and not go to Australia. Well, I, exactly. So I'm gonna go. And there you can't go then. there without me. So. And I mean, it would probably make sense if we were gonna do that to do a little stop off in Bali on the way. Maybe we need an awake ones, <laughs> Bali, Australia, New Zealand, extravaganza. So, Sally, what country would you go to that you haven't been to before? There are many countries that I would go to, but for, for this year, it's got to be Denmark. Ooh. Ah, that's yeah. I haven't been to Denmark, actually. I've mm. always wanted to go to Copenhagen. Just the style I would love to mm, go to yeah. Copenhagen. I remember when I was younger, um, Hans Christian Andersen, the mm. film, with uh, Danny Kay, it was one of my favourite films, and I always remember the, the, the one about the Little Mermaid, which, and then they have the statue in Copenhagen, so I've always wanted to go there, not just to see the statue, but that was a part of it. It's so. beautiful, such a beautiful city, I went for Christmas one year, yeah. and you know, we booked it over Christmas thinking that they'd have all the markets and everything, right. but actually when we got there, all the markets were over. <laughs> Christmas Eve, so that Christmas is all about family and everything, oh. so everything pretty much shut down over right. Christmas. Right. So we had like a half a day to have a look around like the streets and then public holidays everywhere. And so it was me and um, two friends and one friend's brother. And the universe, as usual, orchestrated it and we were walking around going, oh my god, there's nothing open. There was like one massive big four-story pub that was a bit like selling burgers and things and we were like if nothing else we'll go in there but something made us keep walking and we found this restaurant it was it from the outside it was beautiful I felt like the little match girl looking in going wow it was all decked out and it was all smorgasbord traditional food and um people were drinking beers like this big (laughs) and and we're looking in the window and I was like all right it's probably been all pre-booked but let's just go and ask and we did And they were like, give us five minutes, we will make space for you. And they made space for us. And so we had this amazing Danish, like, traditional Christmas with all the pickled herrings and everything and, like, the big beers. And then we went to the four-story pub afterwards (laughs) and danced till, like, midnight. And it was just amazing. And everyone was so friendly. And, yeah, we did all walks around the harbour and everything. But the the one thing I remember is that for all their Christmas lights, it was all big hearts everywhere. It was gorgeous. So lovely. Oh, yes, and the Little Mermaid, obviously. But what, what draws you there? Um, I mean, the start, the aesthetic, for a start, the yeah. style, love. Um, but also, I did one of the, um, you know, these, these ancestry DNA tests, the, the Christmas, they call them. Oh, uh, yeah. I think one of my medical consultants called it the Christmas DNA test, <laughs> because everyone gives them as gifts for Christmas. <laughs> um, and came back with... I think it was 8% Danish. Really? Um, so, yeah. That explains oh. the height. Maybe. Hopefully, <laughs> Some the, of it. Maybe a bit of the style. <laughs> <laughs> if only. I think it's only 8%. I've got Danish in me, and you know, <laughs> I'm not sure they do the whole vomiting of flowers. <laughs> like, constantly. Bohemian. <laughs> 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 
Bohemian like <laughs> clash of patterns. Going. Yes, but I mean it'll be percentages of it. So you obviously have a percentage of something yeah. that was a flower fairy or something. Yeah, yeah. Back in I the, think that's it. Yeah. Maybe it's a mermaid I've got a lot of Neanderthal. Have you? Mm, a mm. lot. Mm. A lot. Wow. I haven't had mine checked, so I And he had a lot. Like he's I think he's Andy's my husband. He had um four point one percent. Neanderthal. Hmm. Wow. And the mo- I think Eddie Izzard was all over the press for having a lot, and I think he had like three percent. That must give you really good survival instinct, I think, and like cunning, maybe like hunting skills or something. Yeah, but then surely aren't we all supposed to be? Um, well, the most they've ever found with sort of modern day man, I believe, is five percent. Well, yeah. that's really interesting considering we're not supposed to come from anyone galactic, isn't it? You know, like so where, where else do we come? Where else, where else would we come from? from? They don't have a strain of oh they do but it's the lev- the percentages the level. and and i think average is like two percent two to three percent or something wow but yeah the most they found in modern day man is five five and andy was what <coughs> 4. Uh, 4.1, 4.1 which 4. 1. i went to town with and then my result so he had 300 neanderthal or neanderthal mm. tomato 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 <laughs> um Genes and yeah, three hundred and one. His was. Oh. Um, so, you know, the jokes were rolling, and I was having a great time. And when Mike came back, I had three hundred and ten. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm at four point two percent. So point eight percent away from the the highest levels of modern day man. So I now think that the Neanderthal people. Well, super intelligent. We're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. They, they probably, it's probably just as well people don't have more of that because didn't they used to communicate by just clobbing each other over, over the head? <laughs> Take what you want. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could be helpful. I'm sure they were very direct in their communication <laughs> too, eh, <laughs> <hey>, Sally? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's certain guessing. situations where clobbing people over the head may have been useful. Well, they can imagine they'd be like, no. Yes, food, <laughs> sex, <laughs> this, that. And I was like, it's kind of, you know, not far off. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's how I speak to my client. <laughs> <laughs> Sally, do you think we should know? <laughs> I was thinking maybe no. <laughs> Have you done one of these tests? Not yet. Have you done one? No, I haven't. No, I really wanted to do it. I really wanted Just to do it. Just a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, hundred percent European. Most disappointed. I'm so sorry, exotic. <laughs> So like, where's my love of the sun come from? Because I'm 100 percent European. I don't right. know. My dad has always said we've got Mongolian in our family. I really want to know if that's actually true. I know that there's Russian, definitely. So it's not that far off, I suppose. Um, yeah, but I knew 100 percent it was something based on yeah. the family. But the DNA is no. It's just obviously a person who moved to that country. Mm-hmm. It didn't actually have the DNA didn't, of that country. Reflect mm-hmm. that. Wow, wow, isn't that incredible? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? When yeah. You can trace your heritage back, yeah. Because mine would be really interesting because we've done, we've tried to do the family tree, sort of a lot of generations back, and most of it is still connected to Ireland. Mm. But obviously, at Irish. some point, you know, people would have would have travelled in, and you know, I'm, I'm still pretty convinced that the the wandering nomads and the, the gypsies, mm. who um, you know, that, that there's still a bit of a strain of that, I think, in mm. you know, but in Irish in families, Europe, no, not necessarily, They're not. If you think, but even if you think back, so, I mean, the world has changed quite a bit. So even the land masses have shifted and changed. So were there connections, you know, between those countries? Or they just travelled on ships so to go to different places? makes it so stupid, doesn't it, that we have borders? Oh, it's ridiculous. That we have borders and we divvy up land when all of us are mixtures of everything. Yeah. No one is from anywhere. No. There should be no ownership. No one owns anything. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. I know, I know. We're children of the earth, like... Children of the universe. I just I, I see humans. I, I don't yeah, see. Yeah. I don't see age. I don't. I think everyone's my age, um, which to some people is a massive compliment. She's, like, <laughs> she's literally only twelve, so it's massive. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see age. I don't see gender. No. I don't see skin mm-hmm. color. I, I, I don't see countries and nationality. I just don't. I see humans. I've always seen. And if you humans. look at people's eyes, you I see s- them, right? Yeah, and if your energy is off. Doesn't matter where you're from. Doesn't matter what you're wrapped in as your packaging. Your energy's off. I'm. I'm kind of over it. Yeah. I cannot even. Yeah. No. I no. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yes. Yeah, we're talking about travel, so that is one of the things that travel. Obviously, 
is now easier to get to places, the world has become smaller, but at the same time it is becoming increasingly more difficult when you think about all of the different security measures and, you know, having to have visas and passports and, you know, I do sometimes feel like it's being made more difficult for people to travel, which in some ways puts will put some people off mm. of trying to get to places. Mm. I mean, even going to India, you know, trying to, trying to navigate through getting the visa, which was really expensive as well. Um, it would kind of make you question just how much you really want to go to those places. Yeah. I think when you're from certain countries, you can't even leave. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Which is like, who has a right to say whether the people that were born there have the right to leave or not. Mm. Yeah. I know. Which is outrageous, really, isn't it? When mm. you think Let people move freely yeah, as yeah. they wish. Yeah. You used to have to, in Australia, if you took another country's, like, dual citizenship or pa- passport, you used to have to give up your Aussie. Really? And it was only something like, I think, the year 2000, it wasn't that long ago that they changed it so you could have both. Because um, I'm dual citizen, dual British and Australian, and when I did it, obviously, you could keep both. Yeah. But I think what happened was they had a lot of famous people that going off to Hollywood and and oh, also yeah. big business people that were then taking American citizenship and Australia was losing out on them. So went, oh, maybe we better do something about right. this. So then made them choose. So then they should have both, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm a kind of, you know, contemplate meaning to do it for ages, actually, to get my Irish pass- passport as well as my English passport. Um, we'll get around to doing that at some point. Quite like the idea of having having the two. Yeah. <laughs> and being, you know, being a bit of both. But not sure. I think I think there are some countries, actually, that are much more welcoming if you have an Irish passport than if Yeah, everyone likes the Irish. <laughs> I know, I think in Mexico, I think it might have <laughs> saved a few of us that uh, one of the people that we were travelling with was, well, did have his Irish passport with him and pulled it out and they were just about to get a little bit angry with us because they thought we were British, they thought we were English. No, 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 we're Irish, look! <laughs> Irish passport. And then suddenly we were bought lots of beer. And oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, we know how to do that. So, yeah, sometimes being Irish has its... Has its benefits. Yeah, I find Aussie being Aussie has benefits as well. Usually, the like friendly joviality. Whenever I've been to France, because yeah, if you're English, it's you get a different reception. Or if you're Australian, it's like, oh yeah, fine, you know, come on in. No worries if you can't speak the language. <laughs> <laughs> but language as well is a bit of a thing. So, and I mean, I know we do. I know we've done it when we were in Egypt, and even when I was just in India recently I made a real point of learning as much mm. as I could so that I could communicate pe- with people mm. in their language and I was probably doing it quite badly but I think when you make an effort to do it it does make a difference I don't know about Danish Danish is a whole other language really I think you just look really serious and go like <laughs> <laughs> and just learn a few words yeah, mm. yeah. but they also they, s- they speak amazing English yeah. but yeah, they all yeah. think they're terrible at it Mm. So they'd speak to you in this perfect English, and then they all say, "Oh, I'm so sorry about my terrible English." And you're like, <laughs> "You're like your English is better than my English." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I know. It's a, a shame. Really. I would love to speak more languages. Mm. Do you speak? No, I'm, I'm British. I speak, <laughs> speak English. <laughs> Lazy <laughs> DNA. I, I speak Australian. Um, no. She's been having lessons in Australia, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can do accents. <laughs> she can do accents, yeah. Well, I think accents are really important, because yeah. I know that's what happens when I go to France. You're a friend. Oh, Lorraine, on one glass of wine, becomes fluent in French. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy speak. We, we travel. I'm... Um, what was that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, strange be, noises. Strange things in the technology. Um, I always speak in the language in the when I learn words whoever's taught me those words in the country is how I say those words yeah for the rest of time so in Thailand the first person that said hello to me was super animated and said it was sawadika <laughs> and so now that's pretty much how I deliver sawadika um <laughs> so yeah whoever I learn it from that's the accent. <laughs> Hence the g'day, mate. I think, it was <laughs> maybe, I think it was maybe someone in the airport that was just so sick of saying, Zawadika, over and over again. But they just 
stuck to take the mickey. <laughs> and that's now how I speak. But with Andy, he's um, he's great with conveying messages. Yeah. With, you know, with body language, and he's very he's very open to people. He's very friendly. He's very jovial, and he's yeah, his energy is just completely different to mine. Um, and but he only speaks with the accent. So he'll talk in English really slowly <laughs> with a <laughs> local accent. It's so bad. And I'm like, you, you sound like you're taking the mickey. He's like, well, you look like you're taking the mickey. <laughs> but between the two of us, we've been invited to people's homes. We've been into the most, you know, they had a little festival for us in Bali. And, you know, a little celebration for us in Bali. And, uh, like, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it definitely needs the two of us. Yeah, the balance of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But in Bali, they would think you, you're, they would love you. They think you're a goddess with the fair hair and the tall. Yeah, but maybe quite a moody. <laughs> yeah, they'd be like, don't anger the goddess. <laughs> and and like, he lightens it all up. <laughs> so I think yeah, it'd be interesting to see at the end of this year and and see if we all made it. To yeah, Zen. you made it to New Zealand. You made it to Bali. It's bizarre, uh, isn't it? Bali was so close. When where, you are you, where do you are? Oh, that used to Denmark, Denmark yeah. yeah. But I was thinking about this because normally I have this constant wanderlust, whether you know we're going somewhere for work or whether you know, like and like Laurie said, you're making plans and then those plans not happening, but other plans coming and this fly by the seat of your pants, not sure what's going to happen. But it's really bizarre. Like I just went long haul to Australia. And usually I come home, drop my bag, and want to go again immediately. But something's gone. No, I don't. I want to stay put for a bit. I kind of want to be here on Terra yeah, Good to in... stay put for a bit. Yeah. But not stay put. I think, it's, again, everything's yeah. balance, right? You and just, yeah, and just feel into it. Because it is like, I think this is what we've learnt over the last couple of years, but definitely the last year, we became very fluid and very feminine energy and very go with the flow, which is sort of how we roll anyway. Um, but it's listening to that and feeling into it. And even though like, I still love, I, I love travel and I want to travel, but nothing is really immediately going, ooh, I really need to be here, right? And then, you know, we did have the option to go away for Christmas and, and it was like, mm, no, let's just... Let's just stay here. So I don't know. I have no idea. And, you know, I do. I said it to you, didn't I? I was like, I can't see what's in the future. So it's like, just let what will like come most come. Of us can't like, see what's in the future. I because I, get, I keep getting this feeling as well around the, the, this coming year that there's something on the horizon. And this is for everyone. Everyone mm. I've spoken to, I get this sense that there's something very unknown that's unfolding, but that is something to get excited about. Yeah. And if you, this was kind of like the message I kept getting and that I keep saying to people is, if you knew there was something on the horizon that you couldn't see and you didn't know what it was, but you knew it was something really miraculous and amazing that was going to make your, your life change for the better in, a, in some way, that, that feeling of excitement that something really good is coming hold on to that feeling because that's what then attracts yeah. it in. So Absolutely. whether it's a, an adventure or whether it's a, an opportunity or whether it's just something new and different and something unexpected because so many of us have been like doing a lot of work on ourselves and finding it's a bit like walking through glue and like even a lot of the travel that you know we've been doing has been for either work or spiritual work or to better ourselves or whatever. So it feels like we're going to start reaping some of the rewards of that and yeah. whatever that big gold nugget is on the horizon it's like a prize <laughs> that's called the sun um, <laughs> yeah that's a big gold taste nugget on the horizon the <laughs> but i think as well that when people were all getting a bit hysterical about 2012 being the end of the main calendar mm. and some people were thinking it was going to be the end of the world which clearly it wasn't Actually, the Mayans were talking about the end of the cycle, yeah. and it was going into a, a kind of a new period. And actually, in the research that, that I did around that time, they were saying that it was a, a window of change that was going to be running from 2012 right up to 2019. Mm. And that 2020 was then going to be the beginning of the, the next cycle, which, if you want to call it the golden age or you know, whatever 
name people want to call it, but it really does feel like this year is the... It's like a culmination. It's like the culmination, yeah, yeah and it is sort of that end of that struggle cycle, because I think everyone's felt it. It's been yeah. really hard. It has been like wading through treacle sometimes, yeah. but it feels like it's actually coming to the end of that cycle now, where you're starting to come back in to a, a period of something lighter and brighter and easier, mm. like projects actually starting to happen, things yeah. that, like seeds that people have planted actually growing into yeah. fruition. So I think it could be quite a... I mean, you've seen it with your work. I think we're all kind yeah, of seeing it different ways. With feng shui as well, the, the cycle's different. It's every 20 years, and that's 2028, where it moves into... It moves from youngest son to eldest daughter as an energy. Right. Um, so I think by then you'll see a lot of women... And the build up to that, a lot of elder, sort of older women, um, <laughs> which would be us, um, you know, rising up at that time. But yeah. the way I feel about this year is, you know, it because of next year being twenty twenty, to me twenty twenty is perfect vision. Yeah. And yeah. Of course. Yeah. I see twenty twenty being. It's just kind of coming to life, really. It's it's, it's clear. Vision. It's the well, it's the vision. Yeah. It's the vision, um, and it's not, yeah. you know, the vision that needs the contacts um, for reading glasses. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of my old lady reading glasses <laughs> on top of contacts. Um, so yeah, a vision. You know, it's been. I've had double vision for a year sort of a bit last year, the year before last, and I, I, the, my feeling for 2020 is perfect vision. Yeah. So 2019 for me is just the, it keeps building and building and building and I'm excited about this year. Um, mm, yeah. Been excited about the end of the second half of 2018. Mm. Um, and I feel we've got over that hurdle from youngest son to the next movement and women are starting to yeah, you can see it, can't you? Yeah, yeah the energy it around it is it's good. It's it feels good. Um, I feel energized. I'm looking forward to the year ahead. Mm -hmm. um, Me too. So I think without a, a subject matter, we probably have gone on for way too long because it's like one of our usual conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Just what we talk about over coffee, really, and yeah. in the pub and whatnot. Yes, <laughs> seven hour coffees. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but it but I think you know if we if we look at it's about being prepared. It's about being flexible, it's about going with the flow, recognising that we are kind of global citizens really, it doesn't matter what language you mm. speak or where you come from or what you're mm. doing, start now planning what you want your vision of that future to be, if you start We're getting trying. an idea, don't, you know, have an idea but then be flexible in how you get there, I mm. think is the point. So essentially we're travelling into the new timeline aren't we, we're yeah. travelling onto the new paradigm, on that new note paradigms. I might go and do some... <sighs> Trying to do some reading. You're just gearing up to be the oldest daughter, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> stepping into that cycle. Anyway, on that note, before it gets completely delirious, <laughs> it always does right at this point, doesn't it? Right, well, time to go. Time to go into a delirium. Okay, anyway. So if you have got ideas about where you would love to go and why, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear about your travel plans and ideas and your visions of the future because let's all get together. If we're all focusing on a similar vision where the world gets to be a better place, then the chances are we can contribute to making that happen. Love it. Love it. So on that note. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.